and Tom Basso. Welcome to Look Back as we take a look at reviews that I did last year, five years ago, and ten years ago around this same time frame. So let's go to last year. A lot of games to talk about. First we have Keys to the Ice Castle. This is a terrible game for kids. It's really just moving around, turning over a tile, seeing if it's something you need or not. They actually remade this, which I'll talk about in a few a month or so. That's even worse. But this one's it's for kids, so I give it a little bit more forgiveness. But it's not good. Seven, that's a five out of 10. Seven bridges, six out of 10. This is an okay roll and write game. You're, you're driving a bicycle around trying to cross bridges. There's some neat concepts to this game. It just feels a little samey game after game. They tried to be historical with the map and all, and I feel like that hurts the game a little bit. Dice Throne Adventures, I gave this a six. Now, the other guys like this more than me. I like Dice Throne a lot. In fact, later on I'll be talking about Dice Throne. But Dice Throne Adventures just felt it was very difficult. I don't think the game should be that hard. And it's a huge box and a lot of setup for a game, and it's very random. And I just felt like it didn't feel like, I, I have a lot of dungeon crawls. I didn't need this one to be a dungeon crawl. Dino's Not Assembled. This is another kid's game, six out of 10, where you're collecting different pieces. It works, it's a cute game for little kids. Athene, a Mystic Library from Renegade, 6.5. Whew. This is their second game about a fantasy library, which is a weird theme. This one did not do as well as the first one. There's some interesting concepts here. Uh, I really like the idea of you playing a card and it affects you and the person next to you. So you're trying to figure out, you don't want to help them out too much, but you have to. I like that concept, but filling the library was not as exciting as I wanted it to be. Praga Kaput Regni, which we just call Praga here, 7 out of 10. I know a lot of people really like this one. It's very highly rated on Board Game Geek. This follow-up to Underwater Cities is not as good as that other game, but there's a lot of neat aspects to this one. But it is very much a throw a bunch of things in a box. The, the main moving of the wheel mechanism works well. Call to Adventure, the Stormlight Archive, 7 out of 10. I'm biased. The Stormlight, the Stormlight Archive is my favorite series of books ever. Um, Call of Adventure is a very simple game about building a character. I like that. This has a few more rules in Call of Adventure. It's a good game, but it is very much about the theme. Fire! Fire! Firefighters! Another 7 out of 10. This is a game for little children as you're trying to move the fire truck and the firefighters to the right side based on a card that comes out. Simple and easy, but young kids will enjoy it. Bloodborne the board game. Another 7 out of 10. Uh, Bloodborne is a... A game that I like, and now there's way too much content for it. I also talked about all the different expansions and stuff, but it's a very thoughtful, cooperative game where you have to fight these enemies, and you do so in a thoughtful way, and I guess this is based on the video game in many ways, but it's, it's interesting, so uh, this is worth checking out. It feels different than the other Simon games. Kohaku, a 7.5. This is a really nice little game about drafting tiles from a pond and building a little koi pond in front of you. You're drafting lily pads and, and that give you scoring things and koi, which are ways to score, and you're building it. I have the version with acrylic tiles. It's beautiful. Funfair, 7.5. This is the remake of a game Unfair with less player interaction in it. Let's take that. And I like it. I like the idea of having my own theme park. Stay tuned. Dice Throne Season 1 Unrolled. They remade Dice Throne to match the old one. And while I gave Dice Throne Adventures a 6, Dice Throne Season 1 is an 8.5. It is absolutely fantastic. I love this. It's like King of Tokyo for two people. Fantastic. And then Aquatica Cold Waters, a 9 out of 10. Great expansion. Adds more stuff. Another player, which I don't care about, but it adds more ways to do things, more mantas. Just lots of great fun. All right, five years ago, I took a look at Chocobo's Crystal Hunt. This is a terrible game about Chocobos. It's awful, three out of 10. Barrage Battle. This is a big, complicated game where you're moving troops around a map and then throwing discs on. To tr it's a weird mix, doesn't work, four out of 10. Kingsport Festival, the card game. So Kingsport was based on Kingsburg with a Cthulhu theme, and it's a fine version of it, except that it's way too big, takes up too much space, and no one played it because of that. Kingsport Festival tried to condense it down to a card game and failed. Four out of ten. Batman, the animated series, almost got him. This is a game in which you're all trying to get Batman. And there's some good ideas in this one. It's based on a very good episode from the animated series, but it just doesn't come together in a very interesting way. Too lucky. Five out of ten. 
Flip City Wilderness. I like Flip City. It has a lot of interesting things going on in it. This standalone expansion did not work for me, though. It took Flip City and turned it uninteresting. 5 out of 10. Dayun de Gros Kaiser Canal. Uh, this is about going down a river, a Euro-style game. Unfortunately, it's very linear. And I didn't find it interesting. That's a 5 out of 10. Unfair. That's interesting. I just talked about Funfair. All right. Unfair originally gave a 5. I'm bumping it up to a 6. And I'm considering playing it again to see if my opinion might change even a little bit more for the better. I'm a little jealous of all the expansions that keep getting released for Unfair. None are getting released for Funfair. All these different thematic ways to play the game. Um, then we have Mole Rats in Space. You may never heard of this game, but it is designed by Matt Leacock from Pandemic fame. This is a good cooperative game for very young children. 7 out of 10. Check it out. Squirrel Rush. This is uh, manipulating cards and squirrels. It looks, it's a pretty bland looking game, but it's fun. 7 out of 10. Mint Works. The best of the Mint series. I was like, look at this little game. It's so cute. Looks like it's mint. It's a great little worker placement game. 7.5. Unfortunately, all the follow-ups aren't as good. And Ethnos, an 8.5, and I stick with that. I still wish they would remake this game with new artwork and just great components. This area control card laying game, and maybe someday they will. All right, 10 years ago, I played Western Town, a Western-style game of Euro-style, meh, 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 5 out of 10. Wizard Museum Construction. It sounds as exciting as it is. It's just connecting uh, card squares to each other. Also 5 out of 10. Bizarre. This is a 6 out of 10. It's a classic game from Sid Saxon, and it's changed these colors into these colors, changing them back and forth. It's all about doing that. There's just a lot of games that do it better. String Railway Transport, 6.5. String Railway, an interesting game where you lay down strings, and that's your railroad path. Really cool idea. It's a little fiddly in real life. It just comes shy of being something I want to play. I love the concept, though. Rex, Final Days of the Empire, 10 years old now. It's crazy to think about that. This is the remake of Dune, but it's set in the Twilight Imperium universe. There's some streamlined things that I think are better than Dune, but it really does miss the Dune theme. Um, Manhattan, I gave this one an 8.5. Classic game, came out in 1994 from the same designer as Puerto Rico, about building towers. This still works, but play with the Godzilla variant. Outside the box, some little trivia game. Now, I'm upping this one from a three to a four. Why am I upgrading this rating? Well, because some of the cards, and there's a book in here and some cards in this game that I still use in game shows today. So I got to give them credit for that. Other than that, it's a terrible game. And Pastiche. Pastiche, I'm dropping from an 8 to a 7. This game about mixing colors. There's a lot of good aspects to it. But this has been done a lot in the last 10 years. There's a lot of painting games and stuff. So this is not at the top of its tier anymore. Still works. It's still a lot of fun, Pastiche. But just not as good as some of the other ones that have come out since then. Anyway, those are the reviews that I did 1, 5, and 10 years ago. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. And you've been watching Look Back on the Dice Tower. <laughs>